I'd like to call the City Council Committee the whole meeting for May 16th, 2018 to order. Um, at this time for our moment of silence, you know, we, we are really a blessed city. Um, we're going to obviously swear in our, our new fire chief this evening, but there's a number of others, uh, the new assistant to the city administrator, Sarah Ott, Mallory Merritt is our new HR director, um, uh, Destiny uh, Gerhardt, who is the new um, uh, housing commission director. And, you know, we look at all those, and there's a lot more, actually. Those are just a few. We have such a great program of solid people in this organization who step up, and we can promote from within. We've got great people to be able to do that, uh, and we're really honored to have the individuals we're, gonna, we're recognizing tonight um, and turning over our phenomenal fire department to. Um, and it's honest to see by, it's great to see by the people here in support of you. Um, that's something good for everybody. So we want to thank you for that. Let's stop for a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Alderman Dickman, would you lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Alderman Dickman. Jackie, would you please call the roll? Ambrose? Here. Condon? Here. Rawson? Dickman? Here. Matson? Here. Grip? McGinnis, Cool, here. Tompkins, here. Dunn, here. Seven present, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Jackie. And I just want to note uh, the aldermen that are not here this evening are at uh, city-related trainings and some conferences, uh, bringing back information. So we wish them well and come back with more information that we'll be able to share for all of us. Um, and again, I want to say good evening. And as we begin this meeting of the City Council, I want to again thank and welcome all of those in attendance and those who are viewing. The meeting on the television or on the internet. We respectfully welcome your comments and opinions and please keep in mind that as you talk to the council you're also sharing your thoughts with fellow Davenporters and with viewers throughout the region by way of our TV broadcast. We're happy that you're here and participating in your city government and ask that your participation reflect the common desire we all share to make Davenport an even greater place for all of our citizens. For the children, adults, seniors, and families in our community, those in attendance and those watching at home, I thank you all for joining us. At this time, we ask that you turn off or silence your cell phones and other electronic handheld devices as they can be disruptive and they can interfere with the audio system here in the chamber. If you wish to address the, the council on a specific item that appears on one of our committee agendas, you're encouraged to do so during that standing committee. You'll also have an opportunity to address the council under public with business which is that portion at the end of the meeting, which will occur right near the end. Uh, when addressing the council, I ask that you step to the podium, wait to be recognized by myself or the committee chair, and speak to the council as a body and not to any single member. We ask that you limit your remarks to no more than five minutes, and I ask that everyone, and I know you all will, observe the commonly accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, dignity, and good taste. So thank you again for being here. Um, there's a lot of Found a lot of great things and a lot of good things we'll be doing this evening as well. Uh, is there a city administrator update this evening? Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, we have five public hearings this evening, um, and we have uh, community development is our first one, and Alderman Kluhl will be leading that discussion in the absence of Alderman Grip. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to uh, open up the public hearing on case number ORD 18.2. Dash 01, amending Title 17.41 of the Davenport Municipal Code entitled Zoning, Highway Corridor Overlay District, and Elmore Corners Overlay District by creating an Elmore Corners Overlay District and design standards. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address the Council on this issue? Please come to the lectern and announce your address and or award, please. Good evening. My name is Candy Pasternak. I'm an attorney with Pasternak Law Firm. Um, I'm also a citizen of Davenport. I reside at 2931 East Locust Street, and our practice is located in downtown Davenport at 313 West 3rd. I am here on behalf of THF, um, the 
developer and owner of Davenport Commons, which is at the very south end um, of the area we're talking about in terms of uh, the Elmore Corners Overlay District. We've attended the public um, hearings at PNZ and the previous public hearing um, on the Committee of the Whole on April 18th. At the April 3rd PNZ Commission meeting, we addressed the Commission, and at that point in time, based on their review of everything in the proposed um, Davenport Elmore Commons Corners or Elmore Corners Overlay District. Um, and their review of our objections, um, they decided and recommended to the Committee of the Whole and Council for the next meeting, April 18th, that the Elmore Corners Overlay District amendment to the ordinance be approved with the exclusion or as amended by excluding the THF parcel known as Davenport Commons. You may recall that Mr. Jager, formerly of our firm, who has now fully retired, um, so um, I'm taking over in his stead, he addressed this body on April 18th and advised um, you of our position and the reasoning for our position. And I don't want to belabor and completely repeat, but I would like to remind you of what a good economic citizen THF has been for the city of Davenport. The, some of the members of this council at this time weren't on the council at the time that THF first came to Davenport at the very beginning um, in 94. And then to deal with the subject parcel that we're specifically speaking of, i.e. the Davenport Commons area, that was all relative to 2001 applications for rezoning. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, there was significant consternation by the city, by staff and neighbors. There were numerous meetings, numerous um, concessions made by THF, and ultimately that area was rezoned as a PDD with significant conditions and restrictions and requirements placed on THF. That happened in 2001. There are specific ordinances that address that in place. I think that the ordinance numbers are 2001, 229, and 2001, 230 that are involved. With that in mind, THF proceeded to develop that property. And part of their development had significant infrastructure requirements that they complied with. And even as recently, and I think Mr. Jager brought this up at the April 18th Committee of the Whole Meeting, with the issue of the stoplight, and that there was an agreement that they pay, and they even tendered the payment before the council actually even approved the agreement that they would pay. So they were in essence, Johnny on the spot meeting their obligations as they have done for the 17 years. Now in 2018, you know, after THF has fully complied with those restrictions, those requirements, mm -hmm. after those requirements and conditions have been built into the plans and specs that they provide to potential investors, <coughs> business owners, tenants that would occupy Davenport Commons, now the um, potential inclusion of THF in the Elmore Corners Overlay District would be a significant hardship. Having said that, I mean, I've heard comments regarding the fact that, you know, this is happening a lot throughout the United States and that there are design standards being imposed throughout. And if Davenport Commons hadn't already been developed, if it didn't already exist, that could perhaps serve as a basis for including it now, but it's not a blank slate like the rest of the property to the north of 59th. Um, I think that there was some discussion that the natural break could be the creek, but the natural break could just as easily be and should be in our mind 59th. You've got Walmart already in place. You've got Dick's Sporting Goods already in place. You've got Field and Stream already in place. You've got Golf Galaxy already in place. The design requirements imposed in the Elmore Corners Overlay District plan, which we have received as part of the community um, disclosure. If you even look at the site, I, what did they call it? It's at page three, it starts, I believe. That's the concept plan, I'm sorry, page seven is where it starts, and I, I don't wanna get bogged down in the minutia, but one of the things that's interesting to us 
is that initially the proposal was to include the entire Davenport Commons parcel. But in all of the descriptions within the plan itself, it only talks about two of the outlots. It only includes two of the outlots. You know, and, and I, you may not have it with you at this time, but if you look at page eight, you'll see that it only includes two of the outlots. If you go back to page 18, it again shows you only those two outlaws. It's not the entire parcel, which when it was first presented, they wanted to include that entire parcel. And we just think that that creates an undue burden on a contributing developer to the city of Davenport who's provided contributions not only in their own economic investment, THF has invested over $43 million in this development. Um, they have obviously with this development generated significant businesses that have come into that Davenport Commons area. They have also created significant amounts of jobs, not only at the end user stage of this, but while it's all being developed. So as a result, we believe that P&Z got it right. We believe that THF parcel, the Davenport Commons area, should not be included in the Elmore Corners Overlay District. We believe and submit that it would create an overwhelming hardship to the development of any remaining parcels in that Davenport Commons area. I mean, it started in 2001. There are still vacant car parcels with the conditions and requirements that exist right now, which aren't insignificant. They've been included in the packets that we submit to those potential business owners and tenants. Then, if you were to add the additional requirements, some of them we couldn't even comply with based on the easements, covenants, and restrictions that are of record with the Scott County Recorder's Office. So, in sum, we do believe p and got it right. We do b believe that they uh, addressed the questions. After April 18th, you folks sent this back to p and for clarification. Um, and I attended both PNZ meetings. I was at the April 3rd and then the May 1st meeting. And at May 1st, there was significant discussion. I think there may have been some confusion and maybe I was confused at yesterday's briefing. But if you look at the transcript from the um, May 1st meeting, there's seven pages of discussion about what was going on. And they were um, addressed um, questions with city staff and with city council. So. Um, and after that, there was a vote sub tendered and completed by the commission, and it was a vote that was to suggest that THF be added back in. That vote failed, and we believe that's the right decision, and the recommendation that came down on April 4th from Chairman Ingram and the one April or May 2nd should be upheld and supported by this council. And to maybe get into some more specifics, Mr. Robert Green from the developer is here with us too. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Pasternak. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this issue? Council, good evening. My name is Robert Green. I'm here on behalf of THF Davenport North Development LLC. I'm going to ask for I reside, your, your address too, please. Thank you. I reside in Columbia, Missouri, 4100 White Pine. Candy uh, laid out very eloquently our position with respect to inclusion in the Elmore Corners Overlay District. And I thought I would take the time to affirm those commentaries, but I also went back to our designs from 20 years ago when we were here before Council P and Z and whatnot. And I will bring before you to look at an exhibit that one person I know has seen but to refresh everyone's memory. THF developed everything from 46th Street 
up to 59th where it terminated where the Walmart was. Excluding American TV, which is now Ashley Furniture and the Target store, and we acquired uh, Best Buy at the time. No, thank you. For those that don't know, we improved the intersection of 53rd and Elmore with dual lefts. We improved the driveway and did a light for the fire station. We did the Davenport West project, which was the original Dick's location. We did all of the out parcels except for Golden Corral. And we have a number of out parcels, only one remains down to 46th Street. We have approximately 13 acres yet to develop. It's usable at about seven, and we've just been waiting for it. We did the dual 10 by 10 box culverts across Pheasant Creek and the road some 1,200 feet to this termination, at which point we were obligated by plat obligations to punch it through and the residential development went in. We did a light at 40, uh, excuse me, down here where the American TV was. Steve Bremer asked us for that at the time. And as Candy reiterated, we did the, or our, the city is doing the intersection, which we were obligated to do on behalf of the plan, uh, which is going in now. And I believe that's being repaired by Gary Stack from the traffic division. Our investment in this community is by no means a small investment. We at one time were the owners of Northridge. We also own the West Kimberly project. I will tell you there are some things that I have a hard time with on the ordinance specifics that are included in the Elmore Coroner's proposed requirements. I'm interested in the growth of, develop, of Davenport as well as our property as well. But I will tell you we are hard pressed to see a development that is, has an appetite where it's harder to develop. And what I mean by that is there are almost <coughs> no parcels from 46th Street to 59th Street that don't have a parking lot that encompasses the entire building. We have requirements, as Candy indicated with our anchor retailer, that requires certain level of parking spaces. That's in direct opposition to what's being proposed as an overlay requirement tonight and in the previous meetings. I'm all in favor of the Elmore Coroner's district north of 59th in our development. But I'm afraid if we have a business that's interested in going on one of our parcels, we are gonna be before you, plan and zone, zoning board of adjustment, asking for variations or deviations or exceptions to what's being proposed today and we'll all look back to this day. I'm here for any questions you might have. This portion of the meeting is not open to uh, conversation with the council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Candy? If I might make one brief additional <coughs> comment. We recognize that PNZ has submitted the recommendation without THF in the overlay district and we support that recommendation by PNZ. Thank you. Is there anyone who else who wishes to comment? 
Seeing and hearing none, I move to close this public hearing. Second. It's moved and seconded to close the hearing. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. It passes. On to you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Alderman Kluhl. Um, now we'll go next, our public hearing will be Public Works, and Alderman Ambrose will lead that discussion. Thank you, Honor. I open a public hearing on the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimated cost for the reconstruction of runway 1533 at the Davenport Municipal Airport. Anybody wishing to address that, please come forward. Hearing and seeing no one, Your Honor, I move to close this public hearing. It was seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Our third area of public hearing will be finance, and Alderman Tompkins will uh, lead that public hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to open with the first one. I'm going to go ahead and read it and then ask staff to come up and do a little speech about it. Um, number one, I, I'm going to open this public hearing for amending the fiscal year 2018 operating and capital improvement budgets. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, Brandon Wright, Chief Financial Officer and Assistant City Administrator. Um, I'm here tonight to just talk a little bit about the fiscal year 2018 budget amendment. Um, as you'll know, every uh, every year during the month of May, we bring forward a budget amendment for you to consider um, for that. It basically is a, an accumulation of all of the changes that we make during the year, um, starting from that first budget plan to what happens during the year in order to, uh, to make sure that from the state level we're in compliance um, with our regulations. So during the month of May, we uh, if there are any changes to that plan, we have to do a budget amendment um, and adopt it before the end of May. Um, so this screen in front of you, I'm not going to ask you to read the numbers or anything like that, but this is technically the budget amendment. Um, it's, it's a one-page document. Uh, there's not a lot of detail to it because you can't see all the specifics about what's going on. Um, because we remain committed to transparency and making sure that everyone's aware of what those changes are. Um, in the packet that's available um, online, hold on a second if this works. There we go. You'll find several pages that follow this with a lot more explanation. I'm just going to quickly go through what those changes are for you. Um, so there are many, many changes that happen in a budget uh, during the year. Several, only a few of them are real changes to the plan. Um, the majority of it by far is bringing forward, forward grant awards so that we still are appropriated to be able to spend that money when we receive the grants. Um, also, the changes that happen with refunding bonds. Um, as, as you know, every year when we, uh, when we go to the bond market, we have an opportunity to refund our bonds. That'll change the budget plan by about 10 to $12 million, depending on the size of that, that refunding. Um, but the, the, as far as the actual change to the original budget plan, there's only a few. Um, one of them was that we increased the health insurance line by $1.2 million. Um, as you know, and, and as you know, many people know, health insurance costs continue to go up. Um, we continue to ra raise those costs in our budgets, but we're always maybe a little bit behind the curve um, on that. We still have plenty of money to cover those costs, um, but we have to appropriate the money to authorize the spending for those uh, if they come in. I don't expect that they'll be as high as $1.2 million, but again, not knowing how that trend is going to end up by the end of the year, we need to have a little bit more cushion than we have right now to make sure that we don't overspend that line. Um, we also have um, uh, a change of $60,000 of some survey work that we actually ac accidentally omitted from the original budget plan. Um, we increased it by almost $30,000 for some land acquisition and demolition costs for previous uh, council approved projects. Um, we also, when we passed the original budget plan, we didn't have anything for Sterilite in there um, because we hadn't yet finalized that agreement. So when that was finalized, we went ahead and the city council approved at the time, at least that motion approving the budget amendment that you'll now uh, ratify here at this uh, during this cycle uh, that changed the budget plan by about almost 11 million dollars for that component of it and then the last of it was the money that we set aside earlier on this year um, for the purchase of a fire truck those are the only real changes to the budget plan all minor items when you compare it to the overall size of it um, but I want to make sure you're aware of that on the next several pages I'm, I'm just going to kind of click through these just to kind of let you see them but there are several pages that provide the detail if anyone wants to go online and take a look at those we would encourage them to do them uh, to do that if there are questions please let me know um, about those but many lines and then you get to the capital projects um, we really uh, try and make sure that everyone knows when you know if a project comes in uh, if we put aside a budget for a million dollars on a project it's very rare that the budget will that the projects will actually cost a million dollars exactly but you can kind of see where everything moves um, for that so you'll see a good example of this um, would be, oh, there, where was one on here? I saw it. The transload facility right here. Um, there was about $310,000 left over in that project when we did the expansion for the rail. We moved all $310,000 of that over to the rail components of that project um, for that. You can see one line sits on top of the other, so you can kind of follow uh, that process throughout. 
The last source, uh, the last uh, component of that is our personnel amendments. Again, we have a lot of personnel that work for the city. Every time a position becomes available, we review what that position does and we modify it, change it, eliminate it, um, and kind of look at what our needs are at that time. You'll have a list there of the eliminated positions and all the added positions as well for the city. Um, again, trying to be as transparent as we can be, all the changes that we've made from the, uh, from the beginning of the year throughout the year um, for that, so for a complete picture of how the city of Davenport is managing its finances. If you have any questions, I can go ahead and answer those later. Okay. Thank you, Brandon, and thank you to staff for putting that together. I appreciate it. Um, anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing and hearing nobody, I move to close this open this public hearing. Have a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This item will move on and be closed. Thank you. Uh, item number two, I open the public hearing for the issuance of not to exceed $27,500,000 in general obligation corporate bonds, series 2019. This is in regards to starting our CIP projects for 2019. Um, anybody from the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing and hearing nobody, um, I move to close this public hearing. I have a second. Um, all in favor wish to close this public hearing, say aye. aye. Any opposed? This, this public hearing will be closed. Thank you. I open our third public hearing, which is a public hearing to convey city-owned parcel M1055D99 to adjacent property owners at 1429 West 46th Street. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing and hearing no one, I move to close this public hearing. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor to close this public hearing, say aye. Any opposed? This public hearing will be closed. Back to you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you, Alderman Tompkins. Um, next, we, are, we have two items under presentations for tonight's meeting. Um, and the first one I'm really looking forward to doing as well. I'd like to ask uh, Mike Carlston to come on up to the podium. Thank you. Um, so if you repeat after me, I get to swear in our new fire chief. All right. Um, raise your right hand. I, Mike Carlston. I, Mike Carlston. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge all the duties of the office charge all the duties of the office of fire chief of the city of Davenport of fire chief of the city of Davenport county of Scott county of Scott state of Iowa state of Iowa as now and hereafter required by law as now and hereafter required by law congratulations chief thank you very much Just real quick, you'll come to learn that I'm a man of few words. Um, I'm pretty humble when it comes to some of these things, but I do want you to know I am excited and honored to have this responsibility. Um, if it wasn't for the great men and women of the Davenport Fire Department, I never would have made it this far. City of Davenport gave me a chance 25 years ago. Um, and I'm looking forward to keep moving forward. Um, I have the support of the majority of the department and the support of my family and friends. And so with that, I see nothing but bright future ahead. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm not sure if I see, and again, congratulations, Chief. Um, I would just, uh, with my tongue planted firmly in my cheek, I just want to note you, you are very succinct and to the point as opposed to the very 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 talkative of Jim Bickford so uh, that was good <laughs> he's dying for a chance to come up and talk but no it's your night so that's good I'm more than happy to let you have <laughs> yeah, there you go there you go uh, I don't see some is someone from the convention in Visibles here oh yes they are great great thank you we're gonna have a little you guys can stay. It can, or you can go <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Hi, Council. Good evening. Um, I am Nikki Ellis, and I'm the sales manager for the Quad Cities Convention and Visitors Bureau. I reside at 2623 Jefferson Avenue. Um, Joe Taylor apologizes for not being able to be in attendance this evening. And um, him, along with myself and the iHeart Media people that we were working with on this event, I'm about to brief you on. I'll thank you for giving us a moment of your time. Um, but we just wanted to brief you um, on this event. Um, the, they will be in town June 23rd through 27th. Um, some, of the, uh, some of your council members have been very, very grateful with their time and assisting with planning this thus far. Um, but it is the 22nd annual WHO News Radio Tractor Ride. It's a mouthful. <laughs> but it's held every June, and it's a, a time and place where farmers and tractor enthusiasts come together all around the country. Um, they take their, they bring their tractor um, to a hub location and then they ride around the state of Iowa for uh, three days so the Quad Cities has been blessed with earning that um, earning that piece of business this year and they will be housed at the Isle Casino and uh, with an estimated num number of 500 tractors and a thousand people in attendance um, they arrive on Saturday June 23rd and then Monday the 25th through Wednesday the 27th um, they set out on their hub and spoke tours for about 30 miles um, and explore what the Quad Cities has to offer. So we are really excited about hosting this event um, and we thank you um, for all of your assistance especially Miss Jackie. <laughs> um, and in total um, this event is projected to bring about $240,000 in economic impact so we're pretty lucky to um, be hosting it. So um, and all three of those days um, they will be riding through if not stopping um, in the vicinities of Davenport so um, but yeah that's it for now and uh, we thank you for your time and if you have any questions later I would be happy to answer them thank you for your time bringing it here to us and another great event that the CVB has helped us bring to the yeah. community thank, thank you. you yes thank you, thank you mayor um, next uh, we'll move to our petitions and communications by the council and myself we're gonna start Alderman Dickman uh, if you would like to lead us off please I actually do not have any community engagement update tonight, so I'll pass it on to whoever's next. Great, great. Well, thank you for that. Uh, Carrie Tompkins. Yes, thank you. I have two. Um, one, we have an upcoming fundraising for the Miracle Field. I, I don't know if everybody's aware, but we have this wonderful field that they're trying to put together out in southeast, the Southeast Little League area, which is up in my ward off of 53rd and Eastern Avenue. Um, so they're going to have a golf outing, a four-person shotgun best ball on Friday, June 15th at EMI's Golf Course. Um, they're looking for golfers and for sponsors. So if you are interested, please feel free to call Parks and Recs at at 888-3106 or you can also probably go online I'm sure as well um, so wanted to get that out there they're close to raising the money and this is a great opportunity um, great uh, project and that it's a partnership between the city and some private organizations so looking forward to that coming to Davenport um, and also I have a ward meeting on Monday at KSI Jane's place and at KSI um, at 630 and city administrator uh, Corey Spiegel will be sharing uh, the budget um, and be there to answer some questions so it is my ward meeting but certainly it's open to the public so anybody is welcome to come thank you thank you Alderman Tompkins uh, Alderman Madsen Thank you, Mayor. Um, two items. One, I attended the Honors Night at Central High School Monday and uh, continuing to talk about all the wonderful things that our kids do uh, in the city. Um, this is a school of about 1,400 kids, and hundreds of them were recognized for their academic achievements. Um, all of them in attendance that got recognized had to have over a 3.25 grade point average uh, for the first three uh, terms of this year, uh, all 9th, uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And the amount of kids that had over a 3.75 grade point average, and then there were a ton of them that had a 4.0 grade point average. So continuing to tell people, uh, we talk a lot about what's going on in schools, but uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of them just at one high school, and I know it's the same for the others that are exceeding the, the great expectations and, and doing so well in our schools. So I just wanted to point that out. And then the second thing, um, if you uh, are interested, I'll have a ward meeting on Saturday uh, at the American Legion at 702 West 35th Street at 10 a.m. Uh, 7th Ward. Um, we'll discuss many things. Um, so uh, we'll have juice and coffee and things. So if you're interested, you could go Saturday to mine and then Monday to Miss Tompkins. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Madsen. Uh, Alderman Cluel. Yes, a couple of uh, <clears throat> other ward meetings coming up uh, in the 6th Ward on the 21st of May at 6 p.m. We'll be having a meeting on stormwater management. Um, uh, 
city engineer Brian Statt will be there for that. Uh, interestingly enough, talking to Public Works, 90% of issues that come to Public Works have to do with water. I thought it was very interesting. It's certainly an issue in the Sixth Ward, so anyone from Sixth Ward or anywhere is welcome to attend that at McKinley Elementary at 6 p.m. on Monday the 21st. Uh, at 5 p.m. preceding that ward meeting, we're going to have a, a neighborhood meeting uh, talking about a proposed lift station improvement at the corner of East 18th and Marlow. Um, uh, there's just uh, some community members who are very interested in that, and we're going to have an update uh, from Ron Hawker on that. So a couple of things, both at McKinley at 5 and 6 on the 21st. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kluhl. Uh, just very briefly, uh, I got back uh, this afternoon from uh, Washington, D.C. Um, we had some really good meetings, again, as part of the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative. But talking about infrastructure, this was Infrastructure Week in Washington, D.C. Um, so there's individuals, all aspects of the infrastructure process throughout the United States and beyond. And we were talking about ways that not only Davenport, but the, all the river cities can participate in the much needed infrastructure items that we need to deal with, as well as resilience and flood management uh, and how we can build unique new things and absorb the issues related to flooding as well. And then lastly, the importance of clean water. Uh, 20 million people a day drink from the river, the Mississippi River, um, and the importance of clean water for manufacturing, but also clean water to drink as well. So uh, made some good contacts, some individuals that are looking to potentially do business here in our community, and we'll continue to work that moving forward. So thank you for that. Um, we're next going to move on to our action items for discussion this evening. And the first area to be discussed is community development, and Alderman Kluhl will lead that discussion. Thank you, Mayor. We have five items tonight for discussion, the first being the third consideration, ordinance for case number ORD 18-03, request to the City of Davenport to amend Title 17 of the Davenport Municipal Code entitled Zoning by amending Section 17.36.030 uh, point B point six by adding sale and storage of Iowa Department of Transportation hazard classes 1.3 G and 1.4 G fireworks excluding any and all sparklers subject to such uses being located more than 1,000 feet from any residential district to all list of permitted uses in the M1 light industrial district is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this item Step forward and announce your address and or award, please. My name is Larry Cornell here. I live at 705 Shular, Clinton, Wisconsin. Um, I was just brought aware of this ordinance. I apologize that I am here on, my, on the third reading. I don't quite understand um, how you can uh, categorize 1.3G, 1.4G, and exclude all or any sparklers. It's kind of vague. And a broad painting a broad brush where like 1.4 G is like maybe compared to a, a, a bullet or a gun shell where a 1.3 would be like a giant military round that would be used uh, professionally and not uh, privately or uh, what I'm saying is that's a display firework and a consumer firework and a non-firework non so I would just like to say that I think that it's very vague I don't understand how it can be put in an M1 where it's a retail firework or a retail area. I, I, maybe I'm confusing you all, but that's, uh, it's very vague to me and I don't understand it quite how you could put those two classes together and lump them into one area. Does anybody got any questions for me? Oh, thank you for that comment. Okay, all right. Anyone else from the public wish to speak to this issue? Seeing none, is there anyone from council who would like to speak? Um, Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is our fire marshal here? You know, we've been, uh, or you've been refining <laughs> this for a while. And briefly, you know, for the gentleman, why don't you try to explain how we got to where we're at? Jim Morse, fire marshal. Back in last july they came they changed the law to allow this to be legal or legal for the 1.4 g fireworks since then back in february 
uh, they came out with the new rules, uh, which actually kind of changed some of the enforcement activities for this. Uh, with that being said, as of February, uh, or excuse me, in March, we met with the state fire marshal just to kind of figure out which direction we were going to go. Most of the cities were limiting this through the zoning ordinance, which is is how the rules are written. Um, a lot of people are comparing to ammunition and shells. The, it, it's really not apples to apples because of the fact that a lot of those stuff regulated. We have people that are coming in from out of town that are setting up that aren't necessarily being safe. So in order for us to do this, this was the best way is through the zoning ordinance by only allowing the storage and sale of these types of fireworks in the M1 and 2 district. You know, this is fairly new. The, the state legislators passed this about a year ago, and you know, the municipal, you mean municipalities have been trying to refine this and protect our community. So, you know, we've uh, this has been a work in progress. You know, I think our fire department's done a great job, and you know, as we move forward down the road, I'm sure we're going to continue refining this ordinance. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Any other uh, questions from, from Council? Uh, Alderman Condon. Um, my question relates to the sparklers. Uh, I have just have returned to this question a couple times. I'm just surprised that there's not some sort of notation like a 1.3G associated with the classification of sparklers. Is it going to be clear to the vendors and the public what qualifies as a sparkler or a novelty as opposed to not? Well, we chose not to regulate the sparklers, uh, and it would be a 1.3 or professional display. Um, those are the ones that actually have a shooter's license. The 1.4 are going to be the consumer ones, and we we made the decision as a whole not to not to regulate the sparklers, whether they're 1.4 G or the novelty type. But when you say sparklers, there's so many things that fall under that. No, there's only a couple different types of sparklers that that would fall underneath that okay. 1.4 feel that we're going to be able to effectively communicate what fits that category correct yeah. alderman Matson. thank you thank you uh, fire chief i just want to make con we we struck we've been talking about this and struggling with this for a year any uh, any way we can support our public safety and w w last year we had retail fireworks all over the place and to ask our uh, public safety folks to go all over uh, the city and and try and figure out who had what where when and what um, this is what we came up and so we put it in one location so they can have a better chance of, of keeping an eye because what went on last year was way out of control thank you thank you Alderman Madison any other comments from council seeing none this uh, this will move forward the second item is a first consideration Ordinance for case number ORD 18-01, amending title 17.41 of the Davenport Municipal Code entitled Zoning, Highway Corridor Overlay District, and Elmore Corners Overlay District by creating an Elmore Corners Overlay District and design standards. Is there anyone from the public who would like to uh, remark to the council on this issue? Candy Pasternak again, Pasternak Law Firm, 313 West 3rd, Re personal residence, 2931 East Locust, Davenport. Um, I won't repeat what I said earlier at the public hearing, but I would just reiterate that THF supports the recommendation that was provided to council by P&Z in its May 2nd letter um, and then would also offer us up for any questions that you might have, um, myself and or Mr. Green. Anyone else from the public? <coughs> Seeing no one, uh, council members, um, uh, Councilman Mike Matson. Thank you. So just to clarify, um, City Attorney or Ms. Fia, just to clarify, what we're voting on here excludes THF from this. So let's make sure everybody understands that. 
that's a, I'm getting a yes, so thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, P and Z got it right in the end. You know, I'm glad to see Mr. Green here. You know, what of a great history lesson. You know, THF has been a great economic partner for the city. I don't think you could find a better economic partner. Over 20 years, their projects have given thousands, thousands of people jobs and has billions of dollars of economic impact to our great city. Now, as an alderman, I can remember they had just started wrapping up the first phase of their construction and Alderman George Nicholas and I asked them to consider moving to West Davenport. They picked up the challenge and if you go out to West Kimberly Road, you'll see another $100 million of investments with billions of dollars of economic impact and tremendous growth. So I look back at a city like Seattle whose elected officials are turning their community into an anti-business environment. You know, they're, they're driving businesses out. We've worked so hard over the years to become business friendly and you know, when a business asks us to reconsider an option, you know, it's, I, think it's, I think it's extremely important we listen and work with all the businesses in our great city. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman <clears throat> Ambrose. Alderwoman Dickman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yesterday at the meeting when we discussed this, there were some questions about what the differences were between the former requirements and what will be expected if the overlay did include the, the parcel in question here. Um, are we, we don't have to get, have it right now, but maybe before we take a vote next week, could someone come up and talk about that, especially if any of the uh, former requirements would be nullified because of incre them being incongruent with the current ones? That would be really helpful. Thank you. And thank you also to the representatives from the law firm. It is great to have a, an investment partner that, that works with the city. Um, I don't think anyone on the council would say we don't want to work with you. I think we just want to find a way that we can do what's best for our community, provide the right amount of scaffolding, uh, and, and find a great way to move forward. So thank you for coming and speaking your piece on this. Thank you, Alderwoman Dickman. Alderwoman Tompkins. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also just wanted to thank you for coming down tonight. I appreciate your time and explanation. Um, and I was actually just going to make the same request. Um, so if we could have that information, that would be helpful. Um, and again, just thank you for your time. No other comments from Alder, Alderman. Um, I think it's uh, one of the great things about having three readings of, of things like this is that there will be opportunity for further discussion with the council and, and discussion, which I look forward to during the next two readings. Um, the next, uh, next item is um, a resolution for the adoption of the downtown Davenport streetscape improvement plan. Any public comment? State your name, your address, and or ward, please. Uh, Kyle Carter, 5th Ward, Executive Director for the Downtown Davenport Partnership. Uh, just came up to say thank you. Uh, Ryan Resnick and city staff worked really hard on this for a really long time uh, with, uh, with businesses downtown, with other uh, stakeholders. And it's a, it's a great document, one that we've needed were to codify a lot of things that have been a handshake or, or, a, or just um, word of mouth things we've done for years or it's always been that way. We finally have a document that says this is officially how it's going to be. Uh, and that's already shown itself to be helpful uh, in the creation of the Eastern Iowa Community College uh, streetscape that you see is a direct result of uh, this document being made. It was already being applied to that project while it was being put together and it's the best streetscape we've got and it's the model going forward. Uh, so I just want to say thanks to Ryan, thanks to the whole city staff, and this is a long time coming, and uh, appreciate this moving forward. Thank you, Kyle. Any other comments from the public? Seeing no, Council, uh, Councilman Mike Matson. Kyle, I'm, Kyle I'm get, might catch you off guard or staff. Um, just maybe a couple highlights of what we'll see, if somebody wants to comment on that. Thank you.
Thank you. Ryan Rustack with Community Planning and Economic Development. Uh, this really deals with all of the improvements that we would have in the downtown street right away. Um, really deals with the streetscape furniture being the bricks, the lights, um, the tree wells and things like that. Also covers a lot of the other things that you're starting to see in the downtown like the encroachments. So uh, we did have a, a older document from 1996 that talked about this. Obviously a lot of new technology has come along. Uh, for instance, the street lights, the decorative street lights that we can use now um, can operate as, as functioning street lights for, for the road. So we no longer need those big cobra head lights. And so really taking all of this, what the city's role is, what the partnership's role is, what business owners' role is, and updating this to the modern era. So I'm very happy to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. There being no, no other uh, council member uh, request for discussion, this item will move on. The um, number four is a resolution setting a public hearing on the proposed conveyance of former rights of way, those being parts of College, Lombard, Denison, and a public alley abutting the Genesis campus. Genesis Health System is the petitioner. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, any comments from council? Seeing none, this item will move on. The last item is uh, a resolution supporting the, great, the grant application and committed match to fund historic preservation commissioners to attend the National Alliance of Preservation Commissioners Forum 2018, and that being in Des Moines, Iowa. Any, uh, any public comment? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. I move that items one, three, four, and five move to consent agenda number two to discussion. Second. It's been moved and seconded um, to move those items forward. Um, call for All vote. Favor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Back to you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Kuhl. Uh, our second area to be discussed is public safety, and tonight Alderman Condon will lead that discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. There is enough on the agenda. As, uh, as this will be my first time reading out loud with you, so if I start to go on or come in, come in with me. Um, item number one, third consideration, ordinance amending Schedule 14 of Chapter 10. Point nine six entitled Intersection Traffic Signals by adding Elmore Avenue at the Walmart entrance, Ward 6. Is there any public with comment? Anyone on council? This item will move on. Item number two, first consideration, ordinance amending Schedule 14 of Chapter 10.96 entitled Intersection Traffic Signals by adding Division Street at 76th Street, Ward 8. Is there any public with comment? Council? This item will move on. Item number three, resolution closing various streets, lanes, or public grounds on the listed dates to hold outdoor events. Bucktown Center for the Arts, Artworks Expo Pastel Competition, May 26, 2018, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Closure location, Pershing between 2nd Street and Emerson Place. Anyone with comment? Council? This item will move on. River Music Experience, RME Anniversary Concert, June 8, 2018, 12 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Closure location, 2nd Street between Main and Brady Streets, Ward 3. Is there any public with comment? Council? This item will move on. Davenport Public uh, Library, Bix Porch Party, August 2nd, 2018, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Closure location, Main Street between 4th Street and the Alley South. Any public with comment? Council? This item will move on. Abate of Iowa District 15, Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade, October 7th, 2018. Closure locations starting at Walmart, Hillendale South to Hickory Grove Road, and South to Division Street, South to 3rd Street, East to Brady Street, North to Kimberly, and East to the former Hobby Lobby parking lot. Is there any public with comment? Council? This item will move on. Lagomarsinos, Lagomarsino Coco Bino 5K, October 27th, 2018, 6 a.m. to 1 p.m., closure location, Christie Street from 11th to 12th Street, 
11th Street closed from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. to Hillcrest, River Street, McCullen Boulevard, Wood Lane to Forest Road, crossing into Bettendorf, then Eastmere to Middle Road, to Kenwood Avenue, to McCullen Boulevard, to East 11th Street, Ward 5 and 6. Is there any public with comment? Council? The 5Ks are normally my favorite ones to read because I sit next to Rita and I can just close my eyes and pretend that I'm running the course, but I'm actually sweating when I have to read it out loud, so it's less fun. Um, Scott County Family Y, Turkey Trot, November 22nd, 2018, 5 a.m. to 12 p.m. Closure location, 2nd Street to Main Street, north on Main to Lombard, east on Lombard to Brady, north on Brady to Central Park, west on Central Park to Vanderveer Park Road, exiting the park to the Lomb to Lombard and west on Central Park to Harrison, south on Harrison to Second Street, and returning to the start finish line, Ward 3 and 5. Is there any public with comment? Council? Alderman Matson? I just want to make a comment. We don't have to hustle to November, so. <laughs> no, I'll take your time. Item number four on the agenda, motion approving noise variance request for various events on the listed dates and times. Baked Beer and Bread Company, Village of East Davenport, Street Fest, June 1st through the 3rd, 2018, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., over 50 dBA. Is there any public with comment? Council? This item will move on. Circle Tap, 1345 West Locust Street, Retirement Party, June 9th, 2018, 5 p.m. to 12 a.m., over 50 dBA. Anyone from the public? Council? This item will move on. Circle Tap, 1345 West Locust Street, Wedding Reception, July 21st, 2018, 8 p.m. to 12 a.m., over 50 dBA. Public? Council? This item will move on. Circle Tap, 1345 West Locust Street, Class Reunion, September 28th, 2018, 8 p.m. to 12 a.m., over 50 dBA. Anyone from the public? Council? This item will move on. Number five, <coughs> motion approving beer and liquor license applications. New, uh, A, new license, new owner, temporary permit, temporary outdoor arena area, location transfer, etc. as noted. Ward three, Chuck's Tap, White Tea Corporation, 1731 West 2nd Street, outdoor area, June 2nd, 2018, golf outing, July 21st, 2018, August 18th, 2018, and September 2015, September 15, 2018, Bags Tournament, License Type C Liquor. Anyone from the public? Council? Danview Inn, Danview QC LLC, 410 East 2nd Street, Outdoor Area, July 27th through the 29th, 2018, Bix Event, License Type C Liquor. Anyone from the public? Council? This item will move on. <coughs> Half Nelson. Bucktown Restaurant Company, LLC, 321 East 2nd Street, outdoor area, new license, license type C, liquor. Anyone from the public? Please state your name and ward. I'm uh, Mike Osborne, uh, 3470 Jonathan uh, Bettendorf. Uh, I'm the owner of uh, Bucktown, LLC be doing business as the half nelson a new restaurant in the uh no nelson building and i just wanted to introduce myself and appreciate your support in this matter thank you anyone else from the public council this item will move on mantra indian restaurant madan llc 220 north harrison street owner update license type beer slash wine Anyone from the public? Council? This item moves on. RME Courtyard, River Music Experience, 121 West 2nd Street, outdoor area premise update, extending outdoor area to 2nd Street between Main and Brady Street, June 8, 2018, anniversary event, license type C, liquor. Public? Council? This item will move on. In Ward 4, the meat market, wheat brunt, Wheat Brutch Enterprises, Inc., 1629 Washington Street, adding outdoor area, license type C, liquor. Anyone from the public? Council? I'll move on. 
Sunmark LLC, Sunmark LLC, 2920 West Locust Street, owner update, license type E liquor slash C beer. Anyone from the public? Council? This item will move on. Ward 5, Baked on Tap, Big Dill Inc., outdoor area, June 1st through the 2nd, 2018, 11th Street, between Mound and Christie Street, Street Fest 2018, license type beer slash wine. Anyone from the public? Council? That item will move on. Ward 6, Buffalo Wild Wings, Blazing Wings, Inc., 4860 Utica Ridge Road, ownership update, license type C, liquor. Anyone from the public that would like to comment? Council? That item will move on. Uh, B is the annual license renewals, and I won't read all those aloud, but they're listed here for your, uh, your the public's information. And with that, I will uh, set the agenda. I will put all items on the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Uh, all opposed? That sh should close public safety. Thank you very much, Alden Condon. Just before we move into public works very quickly, um, again, some of you are new. I haven't seen you here before. Um, again, when we're doing this agenda, we read through every single item. When the alderman says, or the person, the chair reads that item and he says, or she uh, says that mo we'll move on, meaning we're not going to discuss those again next week. If there's any that feels we need more discussion, they'll say we're going to keep that on discussion and talk about it some more next week. The consent agenda means we approve all of them in one, s one big approval. So just to keep you informed of how the process works, if you have questions, you can ask them along the way. And next week, we'll approve that group as a body. And if there's on discussion, we'll discuss them a little bit more. So with that little bit of information, our third area to be discussed is public works. Alderman Ambrose will lead the discussion, and Alderman Dunn will set the agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. JJ did a great job. First item on discussion is a second consideration of an ordinance amending Chapter 13.34 entitled Stormwater Management by updating stormwater detention and water quality treatment requirements, increasing st stream buffers, distances, and new developments, clarifying drainage easement language, adopting the unified sizing criteria, and removing the use of orifice restrictor plates on outlet pipes and restructuring subsections for clarification. I'm gonna read all these items and then we'll go back and ask public with business if they have any concern on these issues. The second item is a second consideration an ordinance amending chapter 13.38 entitled construction site erosion and sediment control by updating definitions of redevelopments and topsoil correlating application procedures information in chapter 13.34 stormwater management. Number three is resolution approving the contract for the River Center Adler Theater HVAC infrastructure upgrade phase one to hometown plumbing and heating company of Davenport in the amount of one million two hundred forty three thousand dollars and eighty two hundred forty three thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. Number four is a resolution amending change order number eight to McCarthy Improvement Company in the amount of $187,000 for the Forest Grove Road paving project from Utica Ridge to the east tie-in in Tibet North City limits. The amendment is to account for unforeseen conditions and finalizing of construction qualities. The city of Devon will be responsible for $59,200 while the state of Iowa will cover $127,800. Number five is a resolution approving the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimated cost for the reconstruction of runway 1533 at the Davenport Municipal Airport. Number six is a resolution awarding the FY19 sidewalk program contract to Kelly Construction of Davenport in the amount of $397,475.80. Number seven is a resolution approving the blanket contract for the purchase of hot mix asphalt from McCarthy Improvement Company of Davenport, Iowa in the amount of $50,000 or $50 per ton and a backup contractor, Tri-City Back 
black top of Benton North Ohio in the amount of $53 per ton. A little pricey. <laughs> Number eight is a resolution approving the blanket contract for the purchase of asphalt oils from Tri-City Asphalt, LLC of Morrison, Iowa, in the estimated amount of $250,600. Number nine is a resolution approving the blanket contract for the purchase of, of road salt for the 2018-2019 winter season from Compass Minerals America Incorporated of Overland, Kansas in the amount of $1,952,430. 10 is a resolution assessing the cost of snow removal from various lots and tracks real estate. Number 11 is a resolution assessing the cost of brush and debris removal at various lots and tracks of real estate. And number 12 is a resolution assessing the cost of boarding up buildings at various lots and tracks of real estate. Number 13 is a motion approving the plans, specification, form of contract for the upgrade of traffic signals at the intersection of Central Park Avenue and Hickory Grove Road. And number 14 is a motion to award the lowest responsive and responsible vendor for the provision of street materials for the 2018 construction season. Saying all this, do we have anybody from the public wishing to address any of these items? Council, Alderman Matson. I just want to say on the salt thing, we do that way ahead of time, so we save some money and don't wait till the last minute. So that's a smart thing to do. Bye. Thank you. That's why we're America's greatest city. Alderman Cluel. Also, the salt issue as well. Um, I wonder if we're trending more, or, or are we trending down in terms of salt usage combined with the solution that we're using? Nicole Gleason, Public Works. Um, if we have favorable conditions to use the brine mix, it certainly saves salt on an individual event basis. Um, a couple of years ago, we did move our residential plowing from t um, two inches to, to more condition-based. So it's really gonna depend on the storm and then the level to which council wants us to respond to events. Yep. I'm wondering with all of the, um, the conditions that DNR is putting on us in terms of filtration and stormwater issues, if, if they, have if they have mentioned anything about our contribution of salt water to the Mississippi River? Well, that's not what I'm aware of, but I can look into it. I'd appreciate that. Okay, yep. thank you. Thanks. All right, you know, we're very fortunate to have Nicole as our leader in public works. Every year we see greater and greater improvements to our public works and our process. All right, all have been done. I would recommend. Please set the agenda. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. I'd recommend placing all items on consent, please. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman uh, Ambrose and Alderman Dunn. Our last area to be discussed is finance, and um, Alderman Tompkins will lead that discussion and set the agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. We have seven items for discussion on finance. Uh, number one is the second consideration, ordinance amending various sections in chapter 2.86 entitled administrative hearing procedures. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Anyone from council? This item will move on. Number two is a resolution amending the fiscal year 2018 operating and capital improvement budgets. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Anyone from council? This item will move on. Number three is a resolution making provision for the issuance of not to exceed $27,500,000 in general obligation corporate bonds, series 2019. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Anyone from council? This item will move on. Uh, number four is a resolution conveying city-owned parcel M1055D99 to adjacent property owners at 1429 West 46th Street. Petitioners Cameron and Shannon Moore. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Anyone from council? This item will move on. 
Number five is a motion directing the city administrator to complete various parks projects with the $250,000 allocated in the parks development project in the fiscal year 2019 capital improvement program. I wasn't sure if staff wanted to comment on this item or not. You don't have to. I'm just asking. <laughs> don't mean to put you on the spot. Excellent. Parks Director Hoke will come up and share his thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Scott Hope, Director of Parks and Recreation. We're always appreciative of the support that council gives us for the projects as we move forward. Um, I, we have several on this agenda. We have two playground replacement, one at Peterson Park and one down at Credit Island. We have just some general upkeep items that are helpful too with some improvements to Junior Theater Windows, which is being partially matched by Junior Theater Inc. with some sponsorship. We have some uh, improvements down at the River's Edge with some ADA, um, countertops and things like that so again some great projects on the list again this year uh, Brandon is very excited about the Ninja Warrior playground equipment that's going in at Credit Island um, so we are looking forward to that one happening this summer so or probably this fall so thank you great thank you so much we appreciate it I know there's lots of things um, and so it's hard to make those decisions to narrow it down to the 250,000 but thank you anyone from the public wish to comment on this item anyone from council Alderman Matson. You wanted to go check out the Ninja Park, too? <laughs> okay, I'll say it. I just look forward to his update next year. Perfect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to move that one on. <laughs> Item number six. <laughs> uh, motion awarding a contract for a consultant for ADA specification plan review services to disability access consultants of Arlington Heights, Illinois. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Anyone from council? This item will move forward. And last, number seven, is a motion approving the collective bargaining agreement for the Davenport Association of Professional Firefighters, local number 17. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Anyone from council? Uh, Alderman Matson. Thank you. I just want to say great job to everyone involved. Five years this, and uh, good raises, so thank you. Absolutely. Um, Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do we have someone from staff to give an overview of this contract for the public? Again, Brandon Wright, uh, CFO and Assistant City Administrator. Um, so yes, so we've been working with the fire union now for several months and putting together a uh, what's a five-year contract. I haven't gone back in history to look and see if there are any other five-year contracts, but this is certainly unique. Cer uh, normally we have three-year contracts, but we're able to reach a five-year deal with them. Um, which is good. The wages are uh, two and a half percent in the first year, one and a half in the second, one and a half in the third, three percent in the fourth, and three percent in the fifth. Um, so it was a, a great negotiating session with them. Uh, lots of issues that we went back and forth with. There's lots more detail in the actual contract itself, but that's the, the, the big story there um, on that. So we look forward to continuing to work uh, well with them in the future. Has this been done to celebrate the new fire chief? <laughs> yes. Thanks. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? <coughs> Anybody else from council? This item also moves forward. Um, I make a motion to move all seven items to the consent agenda. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That takes care of finance. Uh, the rest for finance is just a list of purchases and that's just for informational purposes only. Um, and I turn it back over to the mayor. Thank you, Alderman Tompkins. Uh, are there any other ordinance resolutions or motions this evening? Seeing none. Again, is there any public with business? We ask, please, that you limit your comments to five minutes. And um, anybody who have a comment this evening? Adam. I know you have to get up early tomorrow for your event, so. I have, matter of fact, I do. Um, I have cycling. Starting at give your name and everything because oh, it's sorry. people a lot of people don't know us as know you as well as we do Sorry Adam McWilliams uh, Fifth Ward um, My two events are cycling 1k and 5k and then on Friday afternoon I have running long jump and then I will return sometime uh, Saturday afternoon So I'm rep representing Davenport very well also the police department and also the fire department great well thank you Adam very much do a good job good luck anyone else from the public <coughs> mm. 
Bill Handel, uh, 1514 West High Street, Davenport, uh, also Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a retired architect. As always, thanks for the opportunity to speak before you folks tonight. And uh, that I'm going to talk about right now is going to be not Davenport, but actually Rock Island. But uh, since the Quad Cities are so intertwined and, and uh, in, at the Figgy uh, earlier this year, the mayor introduced our sister city f uh, from, was it Scotland or Ireland? Yeah. Uh, and County, uh, and it was, County, they were so uh, impressed with the turnout at that night. And, and, uh, and it's true, we have great sister cities, but uh, we all know that uh, our real sister cities are the other quad cities. And probably the closest of our sister cities is Rock Island, because not only are we since we're almost like conjoined twins to use the politically c correct term uh, whatever happens to them happens to us and in fact downtown rock island is uh parts of it are cl are much closer than many parts of of downtown davenport and uh and i'm calling to talk about tonight about historic preservation of uh of uh, the rock island county courthouse which uh is an item that's uh uh on the agenda for the rock island commissioners and uh i think there are people here that could see that uh, they have a, an interest in it, uh, its well-being as, uh, as it affects our city of Davenport. Uh, so briefly, I'm going to tell you the history of, uh, of the courthouse of Rock Island, built around 1897, and Davenport at that point had its own uh, courthouse. Of course, at that time, we were about as big as Rock Island County and uh, in Scott County, and, uh, and Davenport built a, a courthouse equally majestic, uh, seven domes as well. Uh, and up until 1950, they were kind of uh, sister uh, courthouses, uh, at which point a Davenport's courthouse uh, had foundations problem had to be demolished. The one in Rock Island, the seven domes that it had, that was really probably like six domes more than it really needed, and uh, they were leaking, so uh, they, uh, took a, they embarked on a, prob on a project to actually uh, take off all the domes and until the other day I didn't realize that they made very major changes to this top level of the courthouse. You can actually see that the stone is different. On the, I thought it was because they never cleaned it, but it's, it's, it was a different stone and they simplified it greatly. They took off the top dome and the, the poor courthouse has been suffering ever since. And now um, a lot of people, you know, when they see something uh, that, that obvious, they avert their eyes, don't want to look at it. So my idea was that uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps it could be, uh, could be changed with, uh, and, and uh, a lot more people would be willing to preserve it with the addition of a, of a dome. People that aren't construction would think, oh, it's millions of dollars to create a, a dome. Well, that's not true. There's, if you go to Las Vegas, you see all the, the uh, simulated middle-age Renaissance buildings. They're all made out of synthetic plaster, a modern material, and from a distance it looks just like the real thing and be the same way on this one. And So what I'm showing is uh, a new dome, not like the old one, it's uh, more of a renaissance dome. This one is based on, like many courthouses, the uh, St. Peter's, uh, I mean sorry, the, the, the uh, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, Michelangelo, still from the best. Uh, Actually, a lot of courthouses have that. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the uppermost part of it, rather than doing an expensive dome, it's just bands of either stainless steel or steel with lights on it, very appropriate for where, you, where you're going to be seeing it coming down the Centennial Bridge at night. Very inexpensive and I think a very big, uh, big change to people's perception of this uh, courthouse. And uh, since it's hard for some people to look at these flat uh, photos, I decided to do a model. So this model kind of shows how it could be done. So anyway, I'm just presenting this uh, for people's consideration. And uh, people that you know in Rock Island County, uh, pass the word on to them. We're going to be uh, discussing it in the next uh, two months. Thanks again. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else from the public? Relax. It's good. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Alderman Tompkins for taking care of an issue that I had reported on Eastern Avenue. Thank you for very quickly following up on that. And second, I want to express my support for the appointment of Mike Carlston to succeed me as fire chief. 
I, during my tenure, I saw firsthand the effort that Mike put forth to increase his knowledge, to gain experience, and I supported that for him. I am confident that he will continue the hard work that I and all the other chiefs before me put in to keep Davenport Fire strong. I look forward to continued progress of this department under his leadership. I also look forward to his participation in the Missouri Valley Division Chiefs Conference this summer, which will be a tremendous opportunity, along with Chief Evers from Muscatine and Chief Brown from Clinton, to showcase our Eastern Iowa River Fire Departments for the other chiefs from the eight states that will be in attendance. I think, and it will also be specifically a tremendous opportunity for Chief Carlston and the department to really showcase our award-winning, incredible central fire station. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Seeing none, um, are there any other reports of city officials? Seeing none this evening, is a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, same sign. Adjourned. Please.